Welcome to episode two of the 1878 FM podcast, which it's now called. When we started last week, the name wasn't hadn't gone through the lawyers. No, I know that because, because I'm the one who come up with you the come name. up with the name. But, <laughs> but to be fair, <laughs> literally all day afterwards, it was like oh, I need a name for this. To be fair, people come up with some good ones, but we we went we went with that. No, there yeah. was a good one. Yeah, there they, was a good they're one. They're not creative director of Toffee well, TV, are they? Yeah, so. You weren't here. You should have been here. <laughs> The lads, me and the lads. As creative ready. director, it's also my uh, no, you know, no, no, my option to stay in so bed. Create, create bed. I need, I need, to, sleep. I need to sleep, and and that's when I come up with my best ideas. <laughs> Just you know, as, as we discussed last week, okay. boys, Ped is still stuck on taxi times. I think, I think what it was is he just got into that mode and liked that time of the day better. And you've that's now your go-to time, isn't it? I think people who get up in the morning are weird, man. Like, is what it? is there to get up for in the morning? It's... See, I'm the other way around, Ped. I'm I'm different because I'm I'm still a sort of hangover. Well, hangover is the wrong word, but it's still a hangover from when I used to get up early in the morning. So I'm better in the morning. I can't. I don't do nights. Seize I mean, I, I, I do nights for watching telly and having a beer, but I don't yeah. do nights for working. Yeah. Per se. Seize the day and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Yes, you've got it. See, yeah, but I was a postman, and this is like where I used to listen to to Dave. When I was yeah. a postman, and I hated it. It was hell. Like on your days off, listening still... to Dave was hell. No, no, the you know what? Wasn't that bad. Funny on. enough, I, know, I, I used to sick. always like. There's a hierarchy when you're in a post office, like when you're in the sorting office. And I always used to put on, obviously Dave's uh, Dave's show. I mean, it wasn't strictly Dave's show. I mean, it, you know, but yeah, but he was a. But you were you you were the Everton end of yeah, it, like the Everton. You were the one uh, people listen. And I used for. to turn the radio over, and people used to go put put something that has music on because obviously they used to talk for Just long talk. Yeah. long spells of time, and they mm. used to put some music on, and then they turn over and put like I don't know Radio City on. Anyone wants to listen to Radio City? Not. Not. Um, if you were a postman, uh, yeah, Peds, I mean you have completely completely shaved hairless legs like all other postmen do. <laughs> well, I'm ginger, so you can't tell the difference. But I did wear yeah. shorts all the time. Like is that, it, is that like part of the? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. UPS. Yeah, yeah. You wear shorts. Just wear yeah, shorts no matter the weather. You get like really, you get really hot, don't you? Carrying all that bag, the bags around and Even stuff. Even like in the winter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, it's, yeah. it's 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 such an active job because you, yeah. you, you you when you start at like half five, you're on your feet. Imagine me at half five. Can no, you imagine no, me at half no. five? No. Well, I've, I mean, I've seen it at half five. It's just that you've not been to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the or thing. Or I'm going home when I was. And yeah, and, uh, yeah it's 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 a very strange job, and you just people are just manic all the time because they've got to be up early, and and uh, yeah, and old people want to talk to you. I found that really strange. I've really, really. Do you like chat? I know my missus are God might be the only person they're going to exactly, speak to all yeah. day, and I'm like, yeah, but it's not going to be me, is it? Like, I, I'm not the person. <laughs> I've to got talk a letter to. to post. You know what I mean? Although, let me, on. can I just yeah, say one on. thing? And and just because, but I did once deliver uh, while we're talking about this, um, someone's hundredth birthday card from the Queen. Genuinely, like genuinely, like was that was very, a real honour, by tropical. the way. Yeah, the yeah. um, the, they came out. Yeah, they came up to me and they were like, they came up to me like, you know, you've got this on your round. Can you make sure it gets there by a certain yeah, time? Because, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, got there, and the whole family were waiting for it, and yeah, yeah. and I got to hand it over to the lady, and I just it was very su- very surreal. That's my only connection to 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 Her Majesty. So uh, I got to do that once, which is you know, the, and the woman obviously was, oh, you can imagine mm. how overjoyed she was by it, like, and um, yeah. And, it was very st- very strange, but also it was a bit of an honour to do that. It is an honour for someone. That's, yeah. best. That is an achievement. Andy, are you are you which which side of the fence are you on? Are you the early early bird or it's a personal you, question? Like, <laughs> it, well, uh, I, it's only know, episode two. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone there. Let's get to know each other better. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I like staying up. I like I like um I, I'm really annoying. I won't go to bed, so I'll stay up and watch mm. like NFL really late or get into um watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. Like I stay up stay up to like one or two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It's absurd, absolute madness. I'm putting films Look at on. me. I'm well, putting films on at one o'clock. But I'm, I'm the same though. I don't go to you know I don't go to bed like generally till late anyway. But I do get up early in the morning. I mean I've had I looked at me Fitbit today. I've had three and three quarter hours sleep. I couldn't. Wow. Go, I, I know it, last night was you know them nights where you you drift. I was watching South of the River, the the Netflix doc on the, the footballers oh. in South London, which is brilliant. Mm. And I was watching it, and it drifted off. And then I woke up, and then when you wake up like half an hour later, when you fell asleep, and you just can't go back to sleep. And I ended up going to sleep about four o'clock, and then I was up with me boy to to have a bit I've of a walk this to thing. school with him. 
I've had this thing recently where it's literally like Groundhog Day, where I keep waking up at the same time, and it's 5.28 in the pissing oh. morning, right? And for three <laughs> days on the bounce, I kid you not, I woke up, and I've got no idea what time it is because the, the, the clock is on my phone, on you know, on, yeah. and charged up on the floor. And I sort of roll over, and, and I reach out, and I'm a bit like, I know it's early, but what time is it? It can't be. It's 5.28 again. Three days on the bounce, and I have no idea why. Any significance to that time? Anything like no. that happened at that no. time? No, I mean, I, I live next to a train track, but there isn't a train at 528, so it's not like that's woken me up. We don't have a milkman. I don't know what it is. It's just bizarre. That is a mystery. Bizarre. That, is, mm. that is bizarre. A previous life or something. For shadowing. Maybe. That. Maybe. For shadowing. Maybe. Mm. That was a film. That is for shadowing. Yeah, yeah. And something to happen. Uh, 528 with Dave Vitti. That would be cool. Yeah. That that's can't be Dave Vitti's 528. I mean, that's it's a it. good title, isn't it? Could yeah. be a wake up. Could be like a wake up show in the morning. Wake up, it's a beautiful morning. There used to be when you wouldn't when um, when I was a kid. There used to be because obviously you'd have your standard going live, but there was always mm. filling breakfast uh, breakfast shows on a Saturday mm. morning. And one of them was the 11, 11 oh eight from Manchester. That used to be on fifteen. That was it. Eight fifteen from Manchester. Where did the eleven oh eight come from? Hang on. Very specific. <laughs> This is Ped's commute again. The 11.08 from Manchester. It was the 8.15. Oh, okay. This is why you're always late. That's it. I was early. I was early. I got the early. But also, I worked on the railway as well. So there's yeah, a little... So nod- there I, worked, I worked on the railway. So what happened at 11.08? Oh, God. Something's very significant 22 years ago. No. I'm just... I don't know. Uh, I'm just... Yeah. yeah. That was a, that was another weird programme. Where you get, like, really hyper people who'd probably probably been up all night oh, to do kids God. breakfast telly which is something i think is massively missing in the world at the moment is mm. kids breakfast Proper telly, where, telly where adults can watch as well yeah. there's uh to wake up on it i mean i don't wake up on saturday mornings but <laughs> if i do wake up on saturday mornings i find bleeding saturday kitchen on i just feel terrible for the kids now oh, do you know man. what the problem is though because but they're not interested you see the kids yeah. the kids have got no interest in telly anymore and, and genuinely and, and and this is quite a sad state of affairs I think the days of kids' telly mm. have gone because mm. they don't, they're not interested. I mean, Bush, you'll, you'll testify for this. You've got kids. Yeah. All they want to do is watch their own thing on their own iPad or their own phone. Yeah. And the idea of them sitting down in front of a box and having somebody else decide when stuff is on is just alien to them. Mm. Tell you, my kids watch a lot of YouTube. Of, mm. They've got these people who open boxes oh, of my toys. Ne- yeah. Yeah. Unboxing. Yes. Yeah, unboxing video. So they watch that. But I mean, I was, I was telling uh, our eldest Erin the other day about I used, we used to have to sit through Whack a Day with Timmy oh, Mallet, right, <laughs> just to watch 15 minutes of Transformers. Yeah. And you have to sit through that program because they'd split it into two bits. Yeah, yeah. One at the middle, one at the end. So, whereas now they want it, they want it instantly. So mm-hmm. they wouldn't sit around like Dave said. They wouldn't sit. It's like Top of the time. Pops as well. You know, it's that whole thing about you know you, you there might be one song that you wanted to hear, and you would sit through twenty seven minutes <laughs> of somebody else's curated playlist just so that you could listen to that one thing. Whereas our kids are just a bit like, no, I want to hear it now. Yeah. If I want to hear it again, I'll put it on again now. <laughs> you just sit there and waste twenty five minutes. To me though, Dave, this sounds like you're just gutted because you're natural trajectory as a radio presenter should have been breakfast t- tv mm. or top of the pops i just yeah, think yeah. you're gutted that yeah. they took those two opportunities i think they would have been good you. on top of the pops yeah it would have been I great think, definitely yeah, yeah i mean i don't know and then it's... then strictly i can see dave yes. i can see dave actually doing strictly but i wanted to do the jungle that's really what i wanted to do Okay. Do you? Dave, See, I, 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 I think you'd be great in the jungle. I don't think I get on in the jungle because I get really claustrophobic. But you're outside. <laughs> well, I know Isn't I'm that the opposite of claustrophobic? No, not if he's sticky in a coffin full of snakes. No, we, we know point. what you say. Snakes There's don't bother you. There's a metaphor for the media industry. Yeah. No. You say snakes don't bother you. No, when no, you go right. in and go, you yeah. see, I'd be rubbish because yeah. they go to me. I'd be good in it because mm. obviously I'm an entertainer. People would love yeah, me. Yeah, go for you. Yeah, yeah. Of course they would. You're the housewife's favourite. But they would say, they would say to me, would. what's your fears? Now, I'd be stuck here because I'd yeah. go, naturally, I couldn't pretend I'm not scared of spiders. I couldn't. So therefore, they'd go, and I'd go, I don't really like spiders. And go, how are you with rats? And I'd go, not a lover. Okay, snakes, mm. not great. First trial, I'd be voted, and what would it be? Me with that... Book it on with spiders and, oh, and that'd be it. I'd be, I wouldn't even put it on. I'd go guaranteed. full Helen Flanagan from years ago. Just go, oh, <laughs> what, the one who fainted, Gillian Mc, you know, the, oh, the, Gillian McKee, the, the poo lady, faint yeah. on yeah, yeah, TV yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah. That's what yeah. I would be like, just to get out of it. Okay. Doesn't she look? Oh, at the other thing as well, though, you know, she did. 
she did for a while, <laughs> which was worrying. Sorry, Dave. You know this. You know the start. You know the start of that as well. Now that other thing that terrifies me, where they stick them out on the top of that building oh, on my that, God, that yeah. platform thing, and I'm just like, no way. I mean, I st- I struggle at Alton Towers now. The you older I get, I feel what? worse with heights. Hang on, Baz, we jumped off a mountain. What are you... We did. We jumped off a mountain we in Wales. Off, we jumped off the top balcony as well. We jumped off the top which balcony, which I've than... wanted to do loads of that times. Was, yeah, but just last we, season. We, me and you jumped off a we mountain did, quite yeah. literally in Wales, so why would you be scared of any I of this stuff? No, it's the, uh, no, I suppose if you... If you're the there. Fa- hang on, so... So, so people don't know this. So there's a there's a like a thing in Wales where you go to the top of a mountain. They strapped, this was for Everton, you know the podcast that we're talking about. They strapped us into these things and then they kicked us off zip the mountain. Wire. Yeah, zip, zip wire thing over the over the quarry. Yeah, but it? you're you're like face first doing a Superman. Yeah. But as we're up there, this is genuine. And as we're up there, we're getting strapped in and everything. It takes ages because of all the safety. And some fella, his phone goes off, and on this is genuine. By the way, your wife's just gone into labour. Mm. Yeah, and we were just sitting there, but we were still we were dangling, dangling at this dangling point. There. And we were like, are we going or what? <laughs> and he went, I, I don't know. My <laughs> missus has just gone into labour. I was like, I don't give a monkey's mate. I want to go to the bottom. Just he push went. me off. He went, didn't he? Yeah, he just got off. He went and we had to wait for... Gwen just went and... Gwen went and we had to wait for you. Would he, would, he, would he not have been quicker getting to his destination on <laughs> just the with us. than if he'd actually had to de-harness and one, go down the stairs? 100% he would have been. Yeah. He would have been quicker. Um... Obviously, due to events last week, there was no football this weekend. So we won't. We're not going to touch on it. But from a football perspective, we spoke last week after the derby, and we were talking about the Arsenal mm. game. And obviously, Jordan Pickford news come after that. And we were, but we were saying, can we keep the momentum going? But do you actually think, as a result of Jordan Pickford's injury, that in some respects it was a not a blessing because obviously. You know, wouldn't say that, yes. but is it good that Everton didn't actually play the game, Dave, from a yes. keeping momentum going? Yes. In 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 a week of sad news, if mm. there was to be one positive to come out of that, I would say that it gives us longer to get Jordan Pickford fit again. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. Do you think? I mean, here's a question, right? I, I think Baz, you might have even tweeted this the other day. Do you think we're actually cursed? Do you think we got worse luck than any other football club in in? World history. I, I, I sometimes I think that we might be cursed. Hundred, we are yeah. cursed, aren't we? You, Did, we? Have we got? Can I see this one? Well, you can finish the answer because I I said this the other day. But has it got worse since Jordan Pickford done Van Dyke? Where we where we fully that day? Where pictures of our club put everywhere and darts just thrown in it? As it does, it feels like it's got worse since that yeah, day. I but, believe so. On. Well, well, hang on. Just on the case point of view. We were league champions when we when the first World War set started. Correct. League champions when the second World War started. Correct. <laughs> so if anyone wants any uh, signs of an oncoming war, you're, 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 you're fine. Just wait. You're yeah, fine. you're all right. You're all right. Yeah. You're fine. It'll Everton be are. when Everton have won the league. Yeah. That's so when the, you want to you win. Can't, you can't ask for two. I mean, obviously, we know what happened when we had our greatest ever side as well. Yeah. You know, in 85. Yeah. You know, mm. kicked, out of, kicked out of Europe. Yeah. Mm. Um, you can't put that on Jordan Pickford, but um, yeah, we're we're clearly clearly cursed, aren't we? Someone, someone has done a, a doll or something or whatever. Um, is it the new? Is it the the new stadium? I feel like maybe we've built on like a, a burial mound, yeah. like something out of <laughs> the Shining. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? I'm sure. I'm sure there was a few bodies down there. I can't yeah. say where they I come mean, from, but <laughs> I'm sure. I think, there's I think down there. Go down there and check it out. Go on, Dave. The bad luck though goes back further than the foundations at Bramley Moor Duck, though, doesn't oh, it? God, that's, yeah. the, that's the thing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've... I, do, I do worry about yeah. our, our f- the fitness thing though. There's, I mean, you know, curse and hexes and stuff aside, mm. there's definitely there's definitely something going on with our with our you know in terms of the physio at Everton at the moment, in terms of the, our fitness, because I, I've never known so many injuries and pulling up in warm-ups and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. I think yeah. Finch Farm is cursed. Mate. Yeah, maybe Finch Farm is. See, that could be the burial yeah. ground, couldn't it? Because what I'd say, the Andy, ground. the only thing I'd say with that, and it's you, you do make a good point, but the only thing I'd say with that is we've changed our medical team and physio so much over the last it must six be years. Cursed, then. And every one of us, <laughs> we've had injuries, so it can only be... Well, Finch but Farm. Didn't, didn't Barry Fry say... Birmingham was cursed, and he had a wee on each corner yeah, flag, yeah. and then they lost it's another not six cursed, on the It's just Birmingham. That's just Birmingham. It's just right? Birmingham. Fair play. Um, we, Other clubs we, are. We have got well. a at Finch Farm though. Um, we have got a bunker, haven't we? Mm-hmm. In case there's ever a in case because ICI was over in Witness or, or or over there somewhere, and there's actual bunker there. Mm-hmm. So maybe the fumes 
from from the ICI chemical plants are coming over and so causing, maybe we get some, like mutations well, maybe for our we players. Get some, like, windmills there and blow it back and then the injuries maybe, will clear. Maybe no, did it? We do see. It's weird though, isn't it? Because you do see, you do see other clubs and you 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 don't see other clubs at times because we're so fixated now on our one football club that you don't see what's going on in other clubs and how their injuries I've are. i seen Liverpool saying they've got eight players out of this Champions League. I mean, I don't know whether they have, but it could be like... See, you don't even know. It could be like You've just gone, Bobby Duncan care. who's been in the squad yeah. once and they're going, he's out for three. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You don't really know. We just look at it and go, how? But you see, the Pickford one, for me, makes... That is one that I go, yeah, I get that because he does like to just leather the ball, doesn't he? And that... Causes man gets injured kicking ball. Yeah, and that's it, a case. But it causes. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, it causes that when you hit and through the ball, that's how you pick five injuries up. He does tend to land funny as well, though, as well, doesn't he? You know, sometimes when he goes and he just he airborne and he seems to come down on his side, on his thigh as well, and I don't know whether it's that. I, and he had a lot of saves to make in that derby, I mean, to be fair listen, to we, him, didn't he? We said, we said this last week. I mean, he was absolutely outstanding mm. in the derby. He was. I mean, we've, yeah. we've all seen him. We've all seen him play well, but he was as good as ever. I mean, just worldy after worldy after worldy. Brilliant. He's, he's been, since he went and seen that psychologist, he's been in really good form, hasn't he? Like, steady, I mean. I'm, yeah. It's for you, is there any, I, know, I think I know your answer, but is there any doubt that he is England's number one? I know you're not that bothered, but is there any doubt he is the best English No, keeper? he's easily the best. Because mm. the other two, Ramsdale and Pope, they've got good assets, obviously, mm. but I don't think they've got everything like, like he has. Yeah. And they, you know, he does make... Obviously, we know he makes the occasional gaff. I don't think it's like it used to be where it was like kicking the ball straight at somebody else and they score from it. Yeah. I think there's there are little things he, he he can still get better at. But I think the other two, I think Ramsdale's a really good shot stopper. But then you see things just go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Pope, I think, is is kicking is is Not woeful. Well, right, yeah. I think that's always but kept good goalie. Yeah, it? that's always kept pick for the head of of the other of the other goalkeepers. And mm. I think you know he'll be number one going into the World Cup. And then maybe it might be a case of then it becomes open again. I, d- I don't know why it would, but you just get that sense with 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 the, the when the media are sort of looking for alternatives because every time someone else has a good game. They go, oh, the the number one's up for it, again. Yeah. and then Pickford has a game like he did in the derby. And no one says anything. No one says mm, he's undoubtedly yeah. number one. And that's the yeah. that's the thing with the media, isn't it? They they love to build everyone up, but then mm. when Pickford has a get a good game, they don't say anything. And that's, that's we did there. have the remember I asked though for when Ramsdale made that save at Leicester last season, the mm. one he pushed onto the bar, and the Athletic done an article yeah. about how he made the save, and it was because he practices pushing off his. One foot and all that. They did do one about Pickford last week. So fair play. Fair it took play. them a year, but fair play. They, they I think the thing with Pickford as well, he's just got that slight edge of madness as well. You know the way that drummers do in yeah. bands. So they're just <laughs> yeah. wired slightly differently. And I think that's the difference between Ramsdale and Pope is that Pickford's just got that slight air of danger as well, I think, mm, which yeah. just sets him above. You're not quite sure what's going on there, and I like <laughs> no, that. No. He's got an edge. Yeah, he, he does. Yeah. He do- um, he, he remind, no, he reminds me of Murdoch from the A-team. Mm, yeah, it's talented, Maverick, but, but Maverick. a bit mad. That's what he reminds me of. A bit Maverick. Maverickish, yeah. yeah. I think uh, Mavericks don't play by the rules, but they get results. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, talking of Maverick, have we seen Maverick? <laughs> Top uh, Gun no, too. no, I haven't seen it yet. Oh my god, what a film! Is it good? It's, it's a great brilliant. movie. It's, it is have good. You seen it, Andy? Yeah, it's one of. The, I think it's one of the greatest, one of the greatest films I've seen, and I think it handled uh, a reboot of kind of quite. An, I, I was worried going into watching it, thinking, how are they going to do this whole kind of eighties kind of macho thing and make yeah. it kind of all right these days? And it was just a brilliant. Uh, you know, two and a bit hours of escapism. Oh. Some of the best stunts, like proper in a plane stunts I've ever seen in my life. Couldn't believe it. Think Question for you, because it's now come on Sky. I noticed the other day mm. when I was flicking through trying to find something to watch. Now, do I do I go and watch it at the cinema, even though I'm a bit too late, or can I watch it at home? I've got surround sound, so you know, will that yeah. will that suffice? I, I would say I only watched this day for about when did I go? About a month ago two weeks ago or something like that three yeah. th- whatever and watched it in the, the pits it's made me now this is a this was a really um iconic film for me and my wife because this was the first film we ever went to see with top gun and i was 14 uh-huh. and she was 16 it was a 15 and she was going i don't know whether you'll get in and you know i just <laughs> smiled at the girl i was in uh, so to go and see to go and see the sequel 
36 years later yeah. was, uh, and I was like you, Andy, going in thinking, I love it. You had said it was good though, so that gave me a bit of. I never went to pitches this year. No, though. I know you'd seen it. I got on a But I went stick. in. I went in and watched it on the pitches and the noise, and yeah. because there's so many unbelievable scenes in it, Andy, isn't there, with the planes and on that in it's the pitches, Dave? If you could go and see it in the cinema, do it. But it's a brilliant yeah. film, so right, you've got okay. an answer. He's not right, though, is he, Tom Cruise? No, he's, he is. Have you ever interviewed him, Dave? Uh, no, because he just no, never seems met like... him. Although I've I've heard that he is, and I have to be very careful because he's one of the most litigious men in show yeah. business. But I believe <laughs> that he is unique in his style and approach to many things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've seen one of his cast in the Zota, funnily enough, yeah, didn't yeah. we? No, he's, he's, we won't he, go on about it, but we've seen one of his. He's genuinely not. He like no, not. I mean that, and like when you see what he what he's prepared to do for mm. films, yeah, like yeah. hang on the side of the planes, like he wants to go to space mm. to film the next Mission Impossible, like yeah. he's genuinely off, he's genuinely like it, it, it's like, belief system he's, though, he, his no, belief it's, system will tell him. No, that. it's off the field stuff. Mm. No, I'll put that to one side. Yeah, I've got to take that. But, you no, know what I'm saying? That gives him the confidence <laughs> to do these. You things, know, but he's it? he's genuinely like as a film star, and also he's like sixty. And he looks... Oh, but that's the other thing. He doesn't look any different. No, no, no. The weird thing with, with Top Gun, he doesn't look that different to how he did in the first movie. So if if Scientology can continue to make you look that good, then, then I'm we, like, all know, maybe, maybe, we, we all need to sign up for it. we should all bow yeah. down to the alien overlords. Yeah. It's... Can I can I bring up something about Top Gun 1 that's possibly contentious, but I'm going to Go do on. it anyway. Is that My big problem with Top Gun 1 is this, is that I didn't... I didn't like the casting of it because I didn't think that Kelly McGillis was good looking enough to for him to fall for her. Controversial. Controversial. Yeah. You know, and I just felt that, you know, who I would just, have been your perfect casting for that role? I don't role? know. I don't know. There's loads of people. Linda Lasade. Or Jet from Gladiators, maybe. Yeah. You know, but I just felt that Kelly McGillis wasn't the right person. I'm trying to think. I got Linda Lasade. Linda Lasade. Eighty six. It was. Too. Yeah, but it would have been Ever filmed in eighty five. Dave, come on, keep it. <laughs> Everton had just won the league, you know, so eight and Heath would have been perfect. Who would you have? Who would you have? Eighty five. Eighty five. Mid eighty five. Oh, someone like Kelly. Uh, Kelly LeBrock. No, I was going. Yeah, I was going to that say would be good. Kelly yeah. LeBrock was was around that time. She was, do, do you remember that era where you used to go into a pub and buy? packs of peanuts and every time he took one off the the cardboard yes. holder on the wall it would reveal a picture <laughs> of someone like sam fox or linda yeah. Yeah. yeah kind of that ballpark person i think we're talking yeah. about what a, gener- yeah. what a different generation. to defend kelly mcgillis in this was that wasn't it the thing of like the little bit of power as well because yeah. she was and wasn't it that because he was the yeah, he was the maverick and mm. she was the unattainable mm. she's the the hot instructor who's at the thing and all the fellas are looking at it. I mean, you know, and the other thing as well to bear in mind, Baz, that it's it's about far more than just visual and aesthetic appearances. Of course. It's about someone's quality and their attractiveness from within and and obviously that's what the whole package was all about, which is the point that I was trying to to make. And she had a nice leather jacket. A leather jacket was excellent. But the way Tom Cruise is, wouldn't he have tried it on with Meg Ryan as well? No. Although that was just me. Meg Ryan's shorter than you. (laughs) Who? <laughs> Tom Cruise is about no, six inches short. No, he wears, he wears heels. No, he does. He's five he for five. He wears heels. He's five for five. He's smaller but than Ned. Interesting, the and other to find a man about... smaller than Ned is incredible. So there you go. Sorry, Andy, what were you going to say? They don't say who the baddies are in, in Top, top no, Gun, which I think no. is uh, interesting. You, you don't know who the baddies are. There's never what, in the new one? In either? The new one. They don't say whether they're in either, like, yeah. Russia or uh, Afghanistan or... Um, you know anything? There's there's anything. no name of the actual mm. the name of the baddies, which I thought was a really interesting. Mm. Got to be careful, haven't you? Got to be careful. Yeah. You know, different times, isn't it? It's it applied. It's applied though, isn't it? It's like it is it applied. Is. It's in fear. But that but, it, but but yeah, but but Dave, watch it because honestly, it's really. And oh, there's I'm a, going to. There's a couple of the iconic scenes that were in Top Gunner in this one, and you know, on the bike and all that. But he from hey, from afar, it could just be taken from the first one because he just looks the same. Yeah. Talking, talking of recommendations, and and I and I have that on my list anyway. There's one that I, I want to ask you about actually, because I saw it this morning. I've I've got a feeling that that Ped, this might be your territory, cool. perhaps. Um, has anybody watched Barry yet? Oh, I've watched all of Barry. It's no. Un- no. it's unbelievable. Like it's right, the good, most good, good. underrated TV show. I've, I, good. It's unbelievable. Good. Well, that's that's kind of the reaction that I thought I might get yeah. and was hoping I might get, and I've now put it top of my to do list. Genuinely. Right, it's the most underrated TV program. Good. In the well, world. I like it. it. It's it it's about a hitman trying no, to break yeah. into Hollywood. Okay. Uh, it's unbelievable, but it's it's so Henry Winkler's in it. 
Okay. My who my mum once told me was my cousin. Weird. Um, <laughs> I, thought you, I mean, I'll be honest. I thought you were going to say my mum once told me when he dad. When he was the Fonz or when he was actually yeah. Henry Winkler? <laughs> no, she said... We've got um, we've got family from from uh, that goes back to to Italy, and she said we were related. I mean, it hasn't been disproved, by the way. That Henry Winkler the Fonz isn't related to me, but no, but it's an amazing program, Dave. Honestly, there's like it's something that nobody nobody really else talks about, and and um, but it's on HBO in America, so it's it's one of those shows that they keep on making because it's so good, and even if no one watches it, it I, it's thir- the thirty minute episodes as well. Ah, it's it's good. Good. but it's so not like them. it's not like slapstick hard. It's like proper dark comedy. It's got like um, it's got like warring factions in um, over like the drug trade in like LA, and he's he's a hitman, and he's a brilliant hitman. But he just wants to be an actor because he's in LA, and it shows you all the LA nonsense and all like the hitman nonsense and all the drug dealing nonsense. It's unbelievable. I'll give that unbelievable. I'll say I'll watch. say what I'm watching at the moment. The capture too. Oh, the capture! Oh, I finished that last night. Amazing. Oh, I've got one to go. Oh hang my on, hang god! On, hang on. Terrifying. I'm going to write these down. What's that? The capture. Capture, capture. on the iPlayer. So Did it's... you not see the first one, Dave? No. Oh, oh it's my genuine. god! So mate. basically, it's I'll terrifying. The premise of the first season is, and I won't go any further. Is a soldier is accused of killing um, a, a woman. Um, this is in the first this 10 minutes. This is in the first, first 10 minutes, so I'm not yeah. ruining anything. Um, and he swears blind that he had nothing to do with it. And and that... But yeah, don't go any further. It does, it, honestly, it's where mad. it goes is is mad. And it's got it's one of those shows that's got one of those... Do you know sometimes like BBC shows will bring like a big sort of a well-known American star into the show? And the show, might, he might only be in it for like 10 minutes, but mm. it gives it that little bit of hint of glamour or... Mm. You know what I mean? And it's the... It's Ron the, Perlman. It's Ron Perlman who was in um, Sons of Anarchy. And he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's in it and he just gives it like a little edge because he's... Cause he's in startup as well. Big American... Good, well, I wouldn't say he's a huge star, but he's a very well-known star. Um, and it, it's a, but the second series finished last night, and it, it was so so good. Have Only you, not, like have you watched episodes. it, Bush? Never heard of it. Never heard oh, of either of those mate, two programs. Dude. Mate, on BBC iPlayer, oh. the capture. Check it out. It's honestly, it's brilliant. Six. I don't want to let you all down. Um, I've been more watching Married at First Sight UK. So <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if that See, I hate puts me off the podcast. See, okay. I hate That's reality really TV, and the reason I hate reality TV is for that 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 right there. Mm. There's an amazing show out there that I love, <laughs> right? And someone else is watching Utter Dross like that. I'm gone. For, no, 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 it. no. Get it, get it right. Don't, I don't, I don't care, care if he's you know the afternoon drive time presenter. I'm not bothered. <laughs> I'll, I'll say it's it fine. as it is here, right? Dross like that, and I used to, I, I think this partly about um, I'm a celebrity as well. Drops no, like that, that I'm a celebrity stops unique. great TV from being no, made. Doesn't. I'm, I'm a celebrity. The only thing I'm a celebrity kind of interferes yeah. with is Christmas Snakes. 24. Snakes. That's what it yeah, interferes frogs. with. But Christmas <laughs> mice. <laughs> yeah, does, uh, yeah, that's all. You listen, that's just part of the course. Yeah. But it's Christmas 24. Cause when it's, will it's you start bill, watching Christmas 24, no, by the way? probably November. Okay. Maybe October. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Check out the capture. It's absolutely brilliant. We're not here to have a time no, to I'm, I'm telling Andy It's and on Dave. the iPod. I you know, but the way you said it was like you were... You no, were, no, it wasn't. But, but this, this is what we you see in a, in, a, in a fallow week, footballing-wise, exactly. which is where we are just at the minute, mm. right? Then obviously we need to talk about other stuff, we and do. I like the fact that we've used this this platform to discuss film and TV recommendations. And nobody leaned in like he was the scouts Philip Schofield then no, to advertise it. Do you know no, what I mean? Never. He only needed a spinning wheel to say you've won a loaf I'll of bread, not, and I'm he's not got being the full hit. I'll do that if we can get the equivalent of Holly Willoughby sat next to me, yeah. mate. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. no, full hit only off. Just one fruit and veg. Yeah, yeah bring, we'll bring you fruit you've and veg. You've got this week's Alecky. Pints there of milk. Go. Tenner to put on your Alecky. I mean, what has what has this morning come like to? They're running, the yeah. running man, innit? I mean, what's going to happen next? Food parcels from Gino De Campo. You've won a week's food <laughs> parcel. I, I tell you what, I wouldn't mind that. Right. that. I wouldn't mind that, to be honest. That would be a good one. Gino you see, around with You the love team. all these people because they're the same height as you, Andy. Yeah. These give I've you got inspiration. No you, like I've said before, you've got no, more issues free. with my, with my I'm height the than fr- I am. No, no, I'm the freak. You are the freak. You're a Viking. Leave you there. Everton have signed the goalkeeper back to football. I saw that, yeah. Okay. From Leicester, isn't he? Eldin Jakubovic. Jakubovic. Yeah, Jakubovic, sure, oh, yeah. Now, the only worry with this is, does this mean Jordan Pickford is, <sighs> if the injury is worse? Or is it just a case of Andy Lonergan, third goalie's injury worse than what they thought? Discuss. I'm, I'm hoping it's plan B. Yeah. Mm. 
I miss uh, what happened to Jal Virginia with his strange black bin man's gloves. Yeah. I loved him. He's gone to uh, he's gone to Holland to play for um, Camber, isn't he? Camber, he's yeah. To, he's gone to play for a team named after the cheese. Like I've just is seen. It, is it, do we still own him or is it? Yeah, is no, he yeah, he's only on loan. loan. He's yeah. on loan. He's on loan to Camber. Like I've just been told, it's basically just an insurance it's policy, an insurance policy Barbie, just to make sure. News from just to make sure. Uh, yeah, he's on loan at Camber, isn't he? Mm. Um, in Holland, because yeah. emergency goalkeeping signings always remind me of uh, it's an Everton moment I'll never forget. Do you remember when we had uh, we, um, emergency drafted in Espen Bud? Oh yes, yes. Oh, I was there. God. I was there. That, that was at White Hart oh, Lane, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, God. it was. I remember because we were there, and suddenly it was a bit like he came out. And it's like thinking, hang on. Why is he doesn't play for us? Like, oh, <laughs> Where they get does. him from? He does Where now. Did we get him from, and literally we were there. <laughs> the best thing it about terrible, him, wasn't it? the best thing about him was his trackies were falling down all yeah. game. Robbie Keane got a hat trick. Yeah. We were we were good that day, but they had four shots at him that went in. He was yeah. dreadful. He was dreadful. Dreadful. He dreadful. We had there. He had tracky bottoms wasn't, on. Wasn't that when Richard Wright fell out the loft? Was that the issue? No, he fell out the loft that somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. He said, he, "Yeah, it might have been actually." But the worst thing, and this is, by the way, I'm going to use a word. Richard Wright who got injured in the warm up at Chelsea yeah, by where it said, "Don't stand on the grass where the sign yeah. was," and he jumped he and landed on the, on the sign. I'm going to use and a terrible exactly. word here. Well, not oh. a terrible word, but a horror a word. I just it just me. The gusset of his pants. Oh, okay. We're, we're oh, by his knees. And I it's hate that word. Away. Yeah. Oh, I what mean, a horrible word that is. It is a bad word, but he, uh, that f- you see, sometimes you have to go through the pain of the bad word to fully encapsulate visually mm. what it was like. And like, his gusset. Yeah. Put it this way: there was no camel toe with him, was there? <laughs> it was literally by his knees, then trackies that day. And I think Gus <laughs> Poye scored ahead of that. Zach would have saved, yeah. and it went through. His, it was dread. What a terrible afternoon! But I've got another one for you because emergency goalies in Everton, you know, a, a, a dance that we like to do. Mm-hmm. Remember Sander Bestervelt? Newcastle came in one game. Newcastle away, got beat two mm-hmm. nil. Never, never played again. Good. Can't remember that at all. I don't remember yeah. that either. Yeah. That was why, about 2000. And why you do what you do and we do what we do? Exactly. <laughs> you could. You this could, is why you're creative director of Toffee TV. There man. you go. Yeah. And we, the housewives I was on, apparently. funny so enough, we, I was on this podcast a couple of weeks ago, and Baz did the same podcast this week, very good, the 10th Pine podcast, it's called, a couple of young lads, and they would say, we were someone Stefan Vessels, so another goalie thing. Great hair. Well, he, the kids Great went hair, to me, do you remember what happened when Stefan Vessel played in the FA Cup final? I went, yeah, the chippy outside burnt down. They went, yeah! I was like, how do I know that? How do I remember <laughs> Stefan Vessels and the, the Blue Dragon the blue burning dragon, down? Yeah. Was that I've, a... What game was it? Oldham, was it Oldham or Oldham when it went? One-nil. The Etiff and the Etiff of the box. Down, the FA Cup. But we were playing Chelsea on the Wednesday in the semi-finals at the oh, League the Cup. League Cup. We got played, beaten that as well. We so. played Stefan, yeah. We've had oh. some. We haven't had great. I mean, we had Jan Mucker who Jan Mucker. let one through. Was, and we had, in fact, Jan Mucker beat Man City 2-0. Two, two was it 2-0? Two 2-0, nil? Two nil, yeah. Yelovic. Yelovic at oh. the end of deflection. Just oh. hit it! Remember the video when it went in? And we've also had, of course, Carlo Nash, Evertonian, who also mm. played in the third oh, round of the FA Cup. Yeah, we got yeah. beaten that, didn't we? Yeah. Didn't ba- he play Batty when... Borisov, he played oh, no, in Bat- the coldest that night. the coldest night ever. Park in the world ever. It was minus... Remember, Yacoubi was captain. Yeah, it was minus he, he 13. Was, he basically, at the start of the second half, played in Yacoubi a was captain. He had his gloves on. He stood by the bench <laughs> asking to go off. And after about three <laughs> minutes into the second half, he just walked off. There's your captain, lads. <laughs> to be fair, to him, he was only 21 at the time. He was 21. He was a young lad. He had his 36th birthday last week. He was he was older than Phil Jagielka, and is now four years younger than him. He was there, but it was his, it was his 36th, 28th birthday. <laughs> well, but to be fair, little story with you, Kubi. We went to Finch Farm a couple of year, oh, three yeah. years ago or something, yeah. and and met him and what he was doing some shooting, which I I absolutely loved the yak. I loved them. But some of his shooting, you took him about a hundred takes to do this volley. But when we interviewed him afterwards, oh my god, he's on a machine, money. He? He, he looked, he just looked like he could oh, still play. It was really? unbelievable. I was, I was, I was really excited when we when we signed him. Mm. I, I genuinely thought this was, you know, some proper firepower up front, kind of, kind of what we need at the minute. To be honest with you, mm. yeah. Well, yeah. we got the just case. Stays up there. So the just stays the up there. Mm. Twenty twenty one goals he got, didn't he? He was brilliant. Then the next season. He hadn't started the next season, great, but then got injured, didn't he, at White Hart Lane, just jumping for a header, and that kind of... Mm. And then when he come back, Moyes preferred Louis Shahar, but Yakubu, I thought, was still was still better. Yeah. But, it was an odd time, that wasn't it? It was just a weird time. We had we had such a good team, but the striker situation was just a little bit... 
Yakubu thought we thought we thought Andy Johnson was going to be the answer. Then we thought BC was going to be the answer. Then then Yakubu, then Louis Sahar. Mm. And it was such a weird time. Marcus they all scored Benz. goals, it but was. you couldn't. Marcus but you Benz, couldn't quite. You. Do you mean Beckford as well? Yeah, you couldn't quite sort of not not rely on them. I mean, Sahar was. Imagine but, just imagine, and it, the lads would be the same. I imagine, but imagine if we had to have Romelu Lukaku as as the striker in that Moyes team instead of uh, yeah. because Rom was. For no. four years for us, you could depend on him scoring goals, and he played most weeks, didn't he? He'd have only been 12, though. He would have been 12, but imagine if you would have been <laughs> able to, if you can put one one person in that team, would have been good. But you know, you remember, one one of the biggest mysteries, you, know, you get these things with, with, with players, a little bit like Deli Ali, where they just suddenly lose it. Uh, I know. I always think, you know, that Jelovic was such an impact player oh, for that one God. season. When do you remember when he turned up and it was just brilliant? <laughs> mm. Absolutely, it was a great time to be an Evertonian. Mm. And then he just kind of lost his mojo, didn't he? The same mm. as kind of, I guess, Deli Ali has a little bit. The, the difference moment. being, though, Andy, is the fact that you know we we signed Deli Ali four years after he lost his mojo. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's very much a On typical kind of Everton tra- trait, isn't it? You know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's one thing when you have them and then they go off the boil, but don't buy them four <laughs> years after they've gone off the boil and actually four or five different managers have told you that I, I feel I wonder how is he getting on over at Basic Das is Ginger, he doing okay they, yeah. they, remember they released a video of him doing a few a nutmeg mm. and stuff he scored last week and got injured in the same game and he, he, he got beat last night and he wasn't involved he was the, the good news is though his hairline is lower mm. well Shank was there with yeah. his full hair so fair play to him <laughs> the man who can turn full full oh ball with three strands into we, uh, Dave I mean, Fitty we, type we, hair on a match day it's incredible Fortunately, we only we only paid twenty eight million yeah, for total. Yeah, oh, we um, God, don't. Unbelievable, isn't we it? got to go and watch, watch the team train once on a, like it was like a Wednesday afternoon. There's nothing special about it. We just got invited to go and watch them train, um, and we're standing over the balcony watching them train. And honest to God, Tosin's hairline it's just it was like have you ever seen Hook when Hook's wig gets taken off him? <laughs> right, and he just got all. <laughs> It was, it was like that, wasn't it? it? Was but your... yeah, we were, but we filmed it, and 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 we were we were told we were told not to fil- we were told to stop filming, and then on the Saturday, there he is with his full head of hair, spray can had been out, and, it, and is he spray that on? Is yeah, he's spray, spray can can of, genuinely spray. spray. But the mad thing, mad thing is, he is Turkish, and yeah. he's had all this time to get his to re- rehabilitate his knee. Go and get your hair sorted, yeah. lad. He could have come back, like I said, with Dave Vitti type Get it sorted, just. Hey, listen, listen, locks. what is it with my hair? Is is, is that a good thing? Or it's a, a great thing. thing. So Tosin oh, coming yeah. back with your... He, he's had the Scouts holiday. The Scouts mm. holiday. Get mm. your teeth done and your hair done. Uh, he's yeah. had all that time to rehabilitate. But last night he had luscious locks. But today play, he'll be like yeah. David Armstrong, former Southampton player. It's <laughs> yeah, your... I, I think I've... John Luke Picard. <laughs> I think I think your hair looks nice, Baz. Thank you, Dave. Yours is better. Baz you sprays is with a colour in the summer as well, don't you? Oh, you've got it. You've got, got it. It's a genuine... You've got one it. day he just walked uh, what, in. Like, what... He walked in one day and I was like, it's Peter Reid in the 1986 yeah. Cup final. Well, What's going on? I'd gone, sprayed it too far, Ravinelli. So I had to, <laughs> I had to bring the white feather back, do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> ahead of, obviously, Everton have got... This game is on at the weekend. They're playing West Ham United, which is which we know the game's on. It's now moved to Sky, because Sky have lost the Chelsea-Liverpool game, which was their game on Sunday. So Everton-West Ham 2.15 this Sunday is live on Sky. Um, this is an op- Even though it's going to be a difficult game, West Ham are playing Silkeborg on Thursday in Europe mm. away, which it just complicates things a little bit for them, which is good. Um, but this, lads, this represents, even though it's a hugely difficult game, it does represent an opportunity for Everton to get up and running, so to speak, with a win, doesn't it? Home at Goodison. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, and it's, it's, it's all, you know, West Ham are a good side now under mm. Moyes, and it's going to be a tough test. But um, I think, you know, we were saying this last week, weren't we? The fact that it's all about building a foundation at the moment and we mm. feel that we are moving forward. And I think, yeah, we've got to try and use a home game like that to try and convert that foundation and that promise into some actual points because because we we know we need them and we don't want to get to a situation where suddenly a few weeks time frank's going to be under pressure because of where they are in the league Mm. points wise also i feel like we're ready for a run i feel like we've got a run in us at some point if we can just get a we've been quite unlucky really i think Mm. in, in a few in these first few games of the season so if we could just get it to go our way a little bit then i genuinely think they're capable of putting a little bit of a a run together. I love seeing it. You know when they all kind of celebrate together when they have scored. They've got they've got such good team. They've got a good team spirit at the moment. Yeah. 
it's taking me back to that kind of you know that the, the halcyon days of when Delafeo and Lukaku used to celebrate together and, all, and, and Pinar and all that kind of yeah. stuff. It was just like you could tell they had a really good bond between them. And I, I think we've got that with this group at the moment. They just need the rub of the green slightly and, and for some stuff to go our way. Hashtag VAR. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the, I mean, Ped, if we're going into an international break, so it would be great to, to get a win, wouldn't it, Sunday, and then yeah. go into that two weeks with on the back of a win. Yeah, to, and sort of just going off the back of what Andy was saying there, I think in, I think the old me, like you know, as a child with with, you know, before Everton corrupted me, mm. you'd be like, we're ready to give someone a hiding, yeah. we're ready to batter someone because we used to mm. always batter someone every season, like a five or a six. Generally, nil. West Ham. Yeah, and and uh, part of me thinks that's that's where we are now. I think we're ready to batter someone or go on a run, like Andy's saying. Mm. But I don't don't know whether yeah. football quite still works like that anymore, just because of. All the tactics and analytics and everything that goes into football these days. I don't think mm. you can sort of say that anymore. But I mean, Bournemouth would argue against. No, it, no, but I don't on. think Bournemouth were ready. Don't think anyone looked at Bournemouth when they're going to get back. No, no. I don't think it just mm. that it just ha- it just happened organically. Mm. I think, but I do think we are ready to get something going. Then going back to what they said, it's it's important that we do that quickly. Yeah. So we're not waiting and waiting and waiting, and, yeah, then, yeah. and then all those outside voices start jumping on Frank Lampard again and, mm. and we're in a situation because it is a weird season with everything going on and with the World Cup. Let's let's just let's just hope everything falls in place for us on on mm. Sunday and we can just get that well, get that win. Yeah. Also as well, I we talked about this a little bit last week, but I think we're hopefully seeing a transition where Everton are moving away from that team that will reverse your bad run for you. Do you know I mean you got a bad run going on? Yeah. Come and play Everton. Yeah, you, know I mean? yeah. you haven't scored for ten games. Yeah. Come and play Everton. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, and mm-hmm. hopefully we get we're a bit nastier, a bit meaner, a bit snider, which we've all been calling out for a little bit because we've been soft asses for too long. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. that that kind of turnaround is gonna you know that's the thing that will lead to sticking a few wins together back to back or going on them. You know, even just like having clean sheets or unbeaten runs, that stuff like that. It's just big. Builds momentum, which is just mm. what we desperately need. Absolutely, and you know, hopefully Dominic Calvert Lewin just look. Yeah, yeah. They haven't released training videos, and he's he's in the middle of it, scoring goals and stuff. So getting him back would. And I think the one thing going into this game, which maybe has gone against us a little bit against West Ham over the last couple of years, has been their midfielders taking over games because of the likes of Declan Rice and Sutiak. Where now I look at our midfield. Yeah. And I feel like we've got such a strong yeah, midfield yeah. all of a sudden, especially with Garner back. So that could mm-hmm. be where yeah, it's yeah. that could be where it's won or lost, couldn't it? Uh, Dave, before we go, just mm. going back to kids' programs because mm. it was just when you were talking before, and I didn't think he. Do you remember why don't you? I do remember why don't you, but I will I will put in the fact that my kids' TV knowledge of UK telly is not what it should uh, be, and that's yeah. because I was born and brought up in Hong Kong yeah. so I missed a lot of stuff so it's almost like my yeah I don't have the same knowledge as I would do as somebody else who was 48 years old which I yeah am. you remember why don't you don't yeah you? yeah yeah why don't you Liverpool they did yeah Sefton Park and no it was, it was Otterspool no it was Otterspool they done one in Sefton Park walking through remember that sticks in my mind from from doing that but just again with it when you were saying before about how kids consume it we me and ped have often had this this conversation that like when we were kids you just watched what was on the telly so we'd watch mm-hmm. like shows with our parents wouldn't we there's, now mm-hmm. there's not a chance like you know my 11 year old's got his ipad uh, he's what to be honest he's watched cobra kai loves cobra yeah. kai he's watched stranger things but that's Netflix. So it's not choice, TV. So isn't it? It's, it's not being TV. in control of, of of what you what you watch. And the thing is that you know, kids of that. I mean, my daughter's fifteen now, and mm. and that that generation of kids have been in charge of what they've watched or listened to all the way through. It's it's just mm. been one of those things. And so, yeah. as I say, the idea of the idea of sitting down and have somebody else tell you when you're going to watch something ah. or the idea that, you know, you can't watch that episode now. You've got to wait a week. Mm. They just, they can't comprehend it. I, no. I see this as well. I slightly disagree with you though, Dave, because I think choice is an illusion. Because, In what way? In well, what way, because, yeah. right. You, and I've had this conversation with, with the younger members of our staff a few times is that you, you think you've got choice, but, Everything they listen to and everything they watch is being chosen for them by the algorithm, and it's a case of if you like okay. the, if you like this, you will like this, mm. or if you like listening to this, you will like listening to this, mm. and all these playlists 
One of the reasons I love radio, and I've always loved radio, and I used to love TV the way it was, even though I love the way TV is now is, is that you were forced to watch certain things that you would never watch, and you were forced to listen to songs. So if you went on holiday, you then I'd always end up listening to the the, the best of the Carpenters or something <laughs> like that, right? And even though you go, I hate this, you'd end up liking certain songs mm. or like Fleetwood Mac or something mm. like that. And it's the same with TV. It's like you would or a film. When we were kids and a certain film would be on, I'd be like, well, this is the only thing we can watch. Yeah. And you'd all end up watching it and you'd all end up talking about it. Whereas now, even though there is so much choice, people still tend to watch the same things. Mm. It's mm. it's just that they watch them at different speeds. And funny enough, I remember I remember li- listening to uh, you and Chris Moore's and it, years ago. And I remember, and it was sort of like, this was like the, the death nail for me. It was like, you know, every every morning radio or or every afternoon was like the water cooler experience, and there was mm. it, I think it might have been like Lost or something like that. You were yeah. watching, and it was like we can't talk about this now because because yeah 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 because everyone's people watching haven't it. Seen, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah, and that to me was was a really sad moment in like in the in 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 what we're you know what we what we do as as a, as communities or listening to radio shows or mm. or us it's i think that's genuinely one of the worst things about it it's why i think netflix are only one of the last ones to do this now but i think that netflix should get rid of that system of putting everything on because everyone else has stopped doing that everyone else is doing weekly shows because mm. it gives everyone enough time to watch it what, and have a chat about it what's mad is we were so we started watching the capture the other night mm. season two we watched it and we got up to so episode four finished the other day and mm. I was like, should we watch the next one? And it wasn't I'll there. put the kettle on. And it finished and it went, no more. You know, like, yeah. you've got to wait. And it was almost like, what? I've got, I couldn't believe it. But <laughs> if it had known through TV, yeah. like, oh, that's on next next yeah. Sunday night at nine o'clock, you kind of accept it. Yeah. Because you're used to on, like, the iPlayer. And they've done this before. They've done, I remember with eight, Around the World in 80 Days yeah, was the yeah. same thing. You'd have to wait for it. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. But once you give it, I think it, it is. Once I you think give it, it too is. much. Because you, you know, you then, because as you said, Ped, you know, the whole thing about what you'd sort of describe as event TV, mm. at the risk mm. of an overly grand title, but just that thing where you go into work or, or yeah. you know, yeah. you'd be having a pint on a Friday night and everybody would be talking about, oh my God, did you see it? Yeah. You know, and it was just really, that shared experience was really powerful. And I mean, listen, during lockdown, it was great having everything available there and then because nobody yeah. was going anywhere anyth- anyway and everybody just had to have something to chew through. But um, I don't know, maybe there's happy medium, as you say, by not releasing everything at the same time. And then, you know, people can at least sort of work through something in a similar time. Mm. There's yep. only really like, I guess there's only things like I'm a celebrity though for that kind. Of, or certainly live sports, sport, isn't it? That's sports what, that's probably what's one of the sport last what things. it is, isn't it? Yeah. That's what making. I mean, even Sky did. That was their slogan. It's only live once. That's their slogan for the season. Is it? Yeah. You know, and mm. that's that's uh, the the right, and that's why sports wear so much money now, and that's why we are where we are. So. Mm. <laughs> we're just thinking, then wouldn't it be interesting if they played all the season in one go and just released it all. <laughs> what, we Would you go straight to the end? <laughs> just I'd just go, go straight to the end, end, yeah. end and see Wait what Everton finish. <laughs> yeah, incredible. incredible. Hey, listen, hey, listen quickly. Talking about <laughs> lost during, do you know that was a that was the first thing that I sat down and watched during the depths of lockdown, oh, and I literally went back and I watched all a hundred and twenty-one episodes. Oh, wow. and they're an yeah. hour each. I know. I know. Wow. And there's 22 episodes in a season as well. 121 yeah. all told. Yeah. Wow. Just a lot of them. I loved Lost. It's one of it literally so is one of, it was one of the it was sort of like yeah, it was one of probably the last great TV show from America which was actually, you know, not not mm. didn't come out of like HBO or anything like that. Um and it's interesting when you do watch it a second time, you pick up on all the little things that you learn later on. Yeah. In, in the first episode actually you pick up on something about about Something that you learn later are on. You, are, you not, are you not saying unless, in case it's a spoiler? No, exactly. That's the <laughs> problem, honest, isn't it? Right. I've That's not, the problem. I've not watched Lost. That's the problem. Well, no, we, won't, we, won't, we won't ruin it for you. No, you we'll can't. Act, I'm not, not we'll going to watch it. I'll I'm li- just, just, I have some on TV, so I'm, I'm, uh, anyway, I'm a massive like Marvel nut and stuff. So I've been watching, been watching She Hulk, which is a comedy, mm. quite funny com. It was, it's funny and it, it, rather than being like um, you know serious tones, if a comic book things can ever be. But last week, the episode, one of the characters in it was watching The Sopranos, and there was two spoilers, and people started kicking off. 
the, the saying that you've just give away and so, <laughs> Sopranos is finished 15 you. years old isn't it yeah, at least it is, yeah. so people were kicking off about that so I've got to be very careful about what I say about Lost people, you know what again, I mean people you've got to respect the process haven't you you've got to so you don't want to upset people no no like, not again. Let's let, no, not again. <laughs> no, not this week. Let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Uh, yeah. So Everton, West Ham, Sunday. Hopefully, hopefully Everton can can go into the international break with a win. Mm. Um, that'll be fantastic. I moved them up the table because yeah. some of the games are off this weekend. So yeah, yeah. fingers crossed for a yeah. Neil or as Ned as Ned started calling him yesterday, Neal Mopai. <laughs> Nial or Nial Mopai. Honestly, I, Dave, str- I, str- I struggle. I struggle with the pronunciation of is it Mopai, is it Mopay, or whatever. And I get that. And I, people say different things, but yeah. Neil, I would have thought, was fairly standard and uniform. That's how he said funny. it for the third time. And I went, um, it's on a video. And I went, hang on, why are we calling him Nial? And you know what he said? It's because of the A. And go, go. That sounds like my four-year-old niece. She started doing learning French in a like nursery yeah. class, and we said to her. What what's shop in French? And she went, the ship. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's as good an answer as you're gonna get. I'd expect that kind of answer from Ned. There so fair go. play. So let's hope Nial, Mapai, Mopai, Mipi. I don't know what I, what he called him. Let's hope he uh, he gets his shooting boots on this weekend and we get the important three points. David Vitti, it's been an absolute pleasure. Get on your paddleboard this weekend. I will be checking will. if you're on it. Mm. I will, where, I will, I will. Well, where did you go with the weekend very quickly on it? Not very far. I just okay. went for it. I, I wanted to go because it because it was a cheap one, right? I didn't yeah. I didn't pay I didn't pay the full recommended retail price for it. I wanted okay. to make sure that it wasn't going to sink. Okay. So I just went for a little, you know, a little paddle around and, and was uh, it okay? And then, and, yeah, it was good. Yeah. I mean no leakages, no nothing. I like so the fact that Dave's days. Dave's just revealed that he bought his paddle board in the middle aisle of Aldi. He did fair play. He went in. I tell you what. I tell you what. It wasn't. It wasn't far off because what happened was my sister said she goes. You know, you're after one. She goes. There's a fellow on Facebook Marketplace is selling them. They're like end of end of season stock. And they're like 175 quid all in. Right, delivered. I'm like right. I'll have one of them anyway. So so I speak to this fella and he comes, he turns up in a builder's van. And he's got this box kind of on the front cab of his builder's van, right? It was a you know, like a, like, a, like a like a like like a flat back, you know, like a flat back <laughs> truck thing, with a cement mixer in the back. And anyway, so he turned up. He was a nice lad. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure that it was it was their official distribution channel for said product, but you know, it, it works. So yeah. I, I'm I'm happy. That's all good, isn't it? Good Dave stuff. went into Aldi, come out with a paddleboard, yeah. and, uh, a fire pit, <laughs> and um, some a some... chimney. <laughs> <laughs> and some bolognese sauce yeah, which is what happens when you go to Aldi it's, it's perfect Dave lovely to see you and speak to and you, you and um, have a good one and hopefully when we reconvene next week we are talking about an Everton victory mm. fingers perfect. crossed see you next Tuesday boys All as right. they say cheers Dave. cheers Dave take care bye there you go give the video a thumbs up or subscribe make sure you do we'll be here every week it's been another another very very interesting one and uh, we will see you next week take it easy bye